Now to downtown Manhattan for another day in court for Donald Trump. The judge overseeing his New York criminal trial ordered Trump to pay $9,000 for violating a gag order. The order bars Trump from making public comments about witnesses, prosecutors, court staff, and jurors connected to his trial for charges that he falsified business records to cover up hush money payments. His punishment also came with an added warning. If Trump continues to willfully violate the order, the court could impose an incarceratory punishment, meaning jail time. With that warning, court continued, and a sixth, wit sixth witness was called to the stand, a lawyer who once represented Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. Keith Davidson testified he worked with Michael Cohen to secure hush money payments for his then clients in 2016 to keep quiet about their alleged relationships with Trump. CBS News campaign reporter and attorney Katrina Kaufman joins me now. Uh, Katrina, good to have you again um, with us. Okay, we know about the gag order, but did it clarify anything in terms of what Donald Trump can say and cannot say uh, in that original gag order? To an extent, because one issue here was the fact that he was reposting other people's posts. And the judge acknowledged that that was an issue of first impression. This has never been dealt with before. And he said that reposts can be viewed as the person's statements, but it's also dependent on context. So it's not a blanket rule. It's not always going to be the case. Another thing he brought up is that the SCAG order is meant to protect witnesses, jurors. But if people are taking advantage of that, then they could lose its protection. So, for instance, if Michael Cohen is posting attacks about Trump, maybe he won't be protected by the gag order anymore. Right. So it's not a free shot for people to attack Trump. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. For those who might just be tuning in again, um, where are we in the drama, in the narrative of this case? So we left off today with Keith Davidson, and mm -hmm. he is the former attorney for Karen McDougal, who was a Playboy model who said she had an affair with Donald Trump and with, uh, or for Stormy McDaniels, or Stormy Daniels as well. My apologies. Um, but really, the prosecution has been laying the foundation of their case. They started with a key witness, David Pecker, who was integral to this catch and kill scheme that was allegedly devised between. Donald Trump and Michael Cohen, his former lawyer. And now we're also seeing some smaller witnesses, but who are also very significant. Michael Cohen's banker, for example, who established the LLC and bank account that the Stormy Daniels payment was made out of, um, and who also said that when Michael Cohen filled out the forms for that account, he said it wasn't for any political candidate, which would have added a layer of scrutiny, perhaps delayed things. Um, we met Trump's former executive assistant, who validated that he had the contact information for Stormy Daniels and for Karen McDougal, and that she'd seen Stormy Daniels, she thought, on the 26th floor. And today, there was a witness who was only on the stand for about 20 minutes. He was there to validate some C-SPAN videos where Trump was responding to attacks from women. But the prosecution was really using that as a way to bring in, they couldn't bring in direct evidence that these women claimed Trump had assaulted him, uh, had assaulted them. So instead, they showed the videos where he was responding to those attacks as a way to present it to the jury. So really, we're seeing these building blocks. And I think as they bring in bigger witnesses, perhaps Stormy Daniels, Karen McDougal, all of these little layers that they've been using also to bring in certain types of evidence the jury needs to see are, are going to show why we've been kind of seeing these witnesses. And that C-SPAN bit, that was basically to, I don't mean to use this term pejoratively, but smuggle in that information because it's not allowed directly. Is that right? In, in a way, yes. And, and the judge had said that they could show Trump's emotional response. It showed his state of mind, they said. But it's also laying this foundation of the campaign being worried about these allegations from women coming out. And that will also play into why he didn't want the story about Stormy to come out. Excellent. Katrina Kaufman, thank you so much, as always. Thanks.